Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to show you guys step by step how to make this kind of weird animation. I don't really know what to call these sort of fidgety spinner looking thing animations that I've been making. It just looks like something that you, you know, have fun fidgeting with. So I decided to kind of make a little animation on it. As you can see here, it's very simple, very straightforward. But I think the thing that makes it really cool is going to be this um, glass material we're going to be making. Like you can see over here, and um, I will be uploading the finished result to Patreon as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and let's make it. So the new scene opened up in Blender. Let's select all the default objects and just press delete. And we're going to go into our top orthographic view. We're going to press Shift A, and we're going to go to our mesh options and add in a circle. And let's tab into edit mode. And with the circle, let's go um, S and just shrink it just a little bit by pressing S. And then we're going to go E to extrude and S. And let's extrude it in about this much. Doesn't have to be too precise. And then we're going to go ahead and go Shift D to duplicate. Right click to let go. And let's go S and just scale it just a very small amount. Okay, very small amount. And let's go E to extrude and S and extrude it in about that much. And now we're going to press A to select all of this and go E to extrude and Z. And extrude it up on a Z and we're going to go about that much, something like this. In fact, let's go into our front orthographic view and let's look at the grid spacing here. So we're all on the same page. You can see here is one square, two square and another three. Let's just take it right to the third square here on the grid. So we've got this kind of grid for a reference. So it's got a height like this. And then we're going to just select the vertex and inside and go control L. That's going to select this whole thing and we're going to go S, Z and just scale it on the Z a little bit like that. Awesome. Now let's come in here on the side, go control R. You're going to see a yellow line appears. So you're just going to left click twice to add it in. Then you're going to go control B to create a bevel. And you're going to go and create a bevel. You're going to leave a little bit of a lip towards the end like so. And then you're going to left click. Then you can go E to extrude and right click. But with that still active, you're going to go S, Shift and Z. So S, Shift, Z. And it's going to scale in only along the X and the Y. So we're going to scale it in about this much. And then we're going to go in here and go Control R, add in a loop, double click. Let's go S to scale it in about this much. And then go Control B to create a bevel. And then roll the middle mouse button two or three times just to add in some extra segments and then double click. And now tab back out. And now you're going to right click and go shade auto smooth. And let's go to our modifiers and let's go add modifier. Let's go search and type in sub. Let's get a subdivision surface. It's going to mess things up. But all we're going to do now is go into edit mode, go to our edge select and let's go shift alt holding in shift and alt. Let's just left click on these edges running along here and these ones running at the bottom here. And then go Shift E and drag to create a bevel weight, like so. And in fact, let's just grab just a segment on this ring, Control L. Let's just for now press H just to hide that one and get out of the way. And any of these edges here, you're gonna go Shift Alt, left click on them and go Shift E and drag to create a bevel weight. And especially these ones here on the outside. So this one, this one, this one and this one, like so. You're gonna go Shift E, create a bevel weight. And let's go Alt H to bring back the other one. And I just need to grab this edge in here. I've missed that. I'm gonna go Shift E and give that one a bevel weight. So now it's looking really smooth in these inside parts, but we still have a nice sharp bead running around like this. So that's looking really good. Um, I think we'll go back into edit mode now. And let's go Shift Alt and just left click on one of these edges here. So it loops all the way around. I go Shift D to duplicate and Z to bring it down. Let's go E to extrude and Z and extrude it up like so. Let's go about this much. Then go Control L and just go S, Shift and Z and just scale it out along the normals. And let's go something like this. This is gonna be the band that holds our spheres, our marbles in like so. so we're gonna go something like that for now. And let's just go G, Z, and bring it down lower like that. And then, of course, we can go E to extrude, right click, and go S, Shift, and Z, and just scale in like so. And now it's really looking good. Now let's go to our face select option. Shift, Alt, and left click just in the middle here to loop select these faces going all the way around. 
And then go Shift D to duplicate, and then go E to extrude and Z, and extrude up on the Z, like so, just to create a band that runs along here like that. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our front of graphic view, we're just gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a circle here. I'm gonna come to the add circle here, and just make it 10. And let's bring that down, let's go G and move it over here, and let's just go S and scale that circle down. So you can see we have this little circle here. And in our front orthographic, we're just gonna place that over here. And just go E to extrude it up, rotate it, and then E to extrude, rotate. And we're just gonna go all the way, extruding and extruding until we can get to about here. And then just extrude it into this bit here and scale it. So now you just have this kind of little bridge that's holding all of this together, so it's not just floating. So just a simple little solution to kind of hold it on here. And now we're gonna tab out and um, let's just quickly for now give this some placeholder material. So we're gonna to go to our mod materials. Let's go new. And this is with our first material here. Let's just call it green metal. And let's just go to our viewport display and just make it green. And let's just drag up to metallic just so we know what it is. And let's just go plus and go new. Let's just call this, um, let's just call it glowing glass. And let's just come here to the viewport and let's just give it its own color. Let's go something like blue. And we're just gonna tab into edit mode and just select a vertex on this inner part here. And then just click here and assign it. So I've gone control L to select the whole thing. So now we've assigned that material in edit mode. And then let's just select the vertex here, control L on this bit here. And let's just go plus and go new and assign it. And let's just call this um, glass, it's just glass. And um, we'll just leave it as it is in the viewport. And then let's select a vertex here. And then holding and shift select the vertex on this bit, go control L. So we have these two selected. And let's go plus and go new, assign. Let's just call this um, silver. It's gonna be like kind of like a silver material. And let's just go down and give it kind of like a metallic in the viewport. And now we just kind of roughly know what some of our materials are. Just makes things a bit easy later on. So now we can go into our front view, we can go shift a, and we can add in, under our mesh options, a UV sphere. Let's right click and go shade smooth, and let's go S to scale this UV sphere down, and then G. And what we wanna do here, the goal here is just to place it in here. So it kind of sits inside of this um, groove here, so we can kind of scale it up a little bit. So something like that, okay? Now, something you can do, the nice thing about this, at any point you can actually grab this thing, you can just select um, all of it pretty much in edit mode and go S, Z and just scale it up on the Z a little bit. And that it'll allow you to do that. So now it's a little bit higher. So if you want to do that, now you can come into object mode, grab this sphere and scale it a bit, but just make sure it's not making contact with any of the mesh. It's just kind of sitting inside there like that. Now over here, you can see it's now hitting this, but we can easily go into edit mode. Just select these verts over here, control L, and let's just go S, shift and Z, and just scale it out along the Z like so, till it's not touching that sphere. And then all you have to do is grab this guy here and just go um, G, X, move it along, and then just extrude this in a little bit further like that. So it's a pretty easy fix if you wanna go like that. So now I think that's looking a little bit better. So now, as long as our little sphere here isn't touching any of the mesh, and now we're gonna go Control A with that little sphere and go apply to scale. So apply scale, that's really important. And let's go ahead to our drop down and give it that glowing glass shader. And let's go to our pivot transform and make it 3D cursor. And seeing that our 3D cursor is in the center here, if it's not, just go Shift S and go cursor to world origin. We can now go to our top view and go Shift D R 25 and hit enter. And then go Shift R to repeat that action till it goes over to the other side like this. And now holding in shift, just select all of these spheres like so. And then just go in your top orthographic view, R negative 90, and then press enter. So they're all over on this side. And now they're just sitting in here like that, ready to be simulated. Um, so let's actually now make sure to save as you're going, obviously. Let's grab this guy over here, the container, and let's go over to our physics. Let's go rigid body. We're gonna take it and make it passive. We're gonna make sure animated is enabled. That's really important. And under the collision shape, we're gonna make it mesh. 
Then we're going to select, select one of these spheres. We're going to go rigid body. We're going to leave it as active. And we're going to go to the shape and we're going to make it sphere. And now that we have that, we just want to make sure that, so this one, whichever one you added that to, that's going to be your main active sphere. So just remember which one that is. So I'm going to go ahead and holding in shift, I'm just going to select the rest of these. And then the last one is going to be that one we added the physics to. And then just type in F3 and go copy from and click on copy from active. And now all of them have that same property. So if we now go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're going to see it is actually simulating. So if we actually grab this thing while the animation's running in real time, you can kind of see we have the physics running. Okay. But for now, let's just go back to frame one and let's go shift A. Let's add in a empty and let's grab the container here, holding in shift, select the empty and go control P. Let's go object, keep transform. And now this is the fun part. This is the bit that I really enjoy and you guys will probably enjoy as well. You're going to come into your front orthographic view and on frame one with this empty selected, you're going to press I and insert a location and rotation. And then you're going to come up to frame 45 or let's go 40, frame 40, then enable auto king. And let's go RX and with the empty, let's go RX and rotate it forward like so. And don't worry, these aren't running because we don't, we don't, anim we don't have the animation running, but you'll see in a bit. So then we're going to go up to frame 75 and let's go RX and let's go this way like that. And let's come up to frame 115 and let's go RX again this way, but kind of tilt it also a little bit this way like that. And remember it's all being automatically keyed. And then let's come to frame 150. 55 and let's go RX rotate it this way again and maybe rotate it like so and then let's just with the empty seal selected come to our first keyframe selected and go shift D to duplicate and drag it all the way to 180 and let's change our end frame value to 180 turn off the auto keying so now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar we're going to see this is what we have Okay, pretty cool. Now, if you wanted this to be loopable, you could extend your animation and kind of rotate it for a little bit longer. So the spheres have enough time to roll back to this side and are kind of roughly in the place where they started. But I'm not too worried about making this loopable. So I'm just going to leave it as it is, but it's already looking really good. Okay, so now let's make sure we save and let's go shift a, let's add in a camera on our front view. Let's go G X or G Y move it back. Now with this camera active, go to your camera settings and we really want this to be really close up in our face. We're going to go with 24 frames and in camera view, we can kind of move our camera just to go closer like so. So you can see it's really close and forward, but before we go any further as well, let's just go to frame one. Let's just go over to our scene properties. Let's just go to our rigid body world and under the cache, let's just make it 180 frames on the end to match our settings here. Now let's just click on bake quickly and this is going to bake the simulation into our scene. So now, you know, if we stop and start again, it doesn't have to go from the beginning. It's all kind of baked in. Just keep in mind, if you make any changes to the animation at this point, you'd have to delete the bake, make your changes and then run the bake again, because now it's kind of baked into the blend file. But now we can actually think about um, lighting. So um, I'm going to actually come to frame one with my camera selected. And I'm just going to go to median point under the transform. And I probably, I'll probably actually with auto keying, just kind of rotate on frame one my camera. So it faces up a little bit and just slightly rotate it randomly or just bit by bit, just kind of go through the animation. And if you want to just ra randomly rotate or move your camera to kind of make it look like it's following along. In fact, I guess it's not that random, just kind of eye it until you think it kind of looks good. Like you're looking at it through a camera. Okay. Something like that, but that that's kind of optional. I think that just looks a little bit better if the camera is kind of trying to kind of look like that. And let's also quickly go shift a and just add in a plane. Let's go RX nine zero. And with this plane, we're just going to go G Y and move it back. And let's just go S to scale it up and then S X to scale it along like so. So we just have a background here like that. And it might not be big enough if your camera is moving. So just scale a little bit if you have to. Okay, that's looking good. 
So now let's go over to our render settings. Let's change it to cycles. Let's make the device GPU if you have one. And let's make the max sample something like 55. Then let's go shift A and add in a area light. Move it over to the side and rotate it in. And let's give that a strength of 350. And let's go Z and let's go rendered. And let's increase the size to two meters. And I'm gonna go ahead shift D to duplicate this and have one coming kind of from the side and in the back here. And then shift D, I'm gonna have one kind of coming from the front over here. So we have three points of lighting like this. And let's go into our shading workspace. And in camera view, we're gonna go Z and go rendered. And let's work on our materials. We already added them. So we're gonna go click on the ring over here. Let's get our materials here. Let's start with the green metal. We're gonna go ahead and make that kind of like a greenish color, make the value a little bit darker, and then increase the metallic almost all the way up to one. Then we're gonna select the glass material and let's go to the transmission. Let's make it a weight of one and let's bring down the roughness quite a bit. And let's take our base color and drag the value up. Then let's select our silver. Let's come to the metallic value here and drag it all the way up to one. And let's drag down the roughness. And then let's select our glowing glass material. And with this one, it's gonna be really fun. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this and let's make it kind of like a blue color. Let's go, let's go to the transmission. Let's make the weight one. Let's come to the roughness and drag it down to point two. And I might make the blue a little bit more blue. And for now, I'm just gonna go into solid view here and let's go shift a search and let's get a layer weight node. Let's go shift a search and get a color ramp. Let's plug the Fresnel into the factor here. And then we're gonna move this material output up and let's come here now and go shift a search and get a mix shader. Let's place it on this cable going out here. And let's take this as the mix of the factor. And then we're just gonna go shift a search and get an emission by typing E, M. Let's get an emission. Let's plug that into the bottom socket and let's just make this a kind of green color. And let's give that a strength of something like five. And this is also come to our color ramp and just drag this black value up a little bit just to tighten the values. And let's just come here to the blend and like it, make it something like 0.34. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, you can see we have this really nice looking shader. And one thing you might notice here is with our glass shader, it's looking good on these spheres, but not on this inner ring. So we're just gonna select a ring and go into edit mode, select everything, and then go Alt and then just go recalculate outside to fix any normal issues. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, you're gonna see that's looking a lot better. It's having the same effect as the glass beads here. Okay, so now let's go into our layout again. Let's go to our render properties. Let's go to motion blur and enable that. And if you wanted to, you could select your background and give that a material as well, and then change the color to anything you want. Um, completely up to you, but let's now go ahead and find a nice shot. I'm gonna go with something maybe like that. And I'm gonna go render and render image. And there we have it. So you guys can obviously up the samples, remove the denoising if you want to. It'll give you a bit of a better result if you do more samples because the denoising kind of smudges things a little bit. But you know, you could add textures to things. Um, you can work more in your lighting. Um, adding in something like a HDRI would really help. Um, but yeah, just give it a shot. And um, yeah, I just hope you guys like the overall concept. Um, I will be uploading my original one to Patreon. This is this one over here, um, which is the exact same thing that I showed you how to make just now. I only spent a little bit more time with the lighting. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you next time for another Blender tutorial.